So if you have one dollar, basically, it's saying. Okay? And if you divide this by 100, if you took a dollar, can you divide a dollar by 100? Is there something that used to exist, at least, it existed in your lifetime, because they only got rid of it a couple, about a year or so ago, but is there something that existed that we can divide a dollar evenly into 100? Right, so basically it's saying that if you divide a dollar by 100, it gets 0 0.01. When you go to a store and you see prices, you might see the price, uh, you buy something, so you go to um, wh whatever, you go buy a bag of carrots or something, and it's a dollar 47, okay? That points, the pennies are 0 0.07. That's the seven cents. So basically, 0 0.01 is like saying one cent. Now, unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending what your opinion is, we don't have pennies anymore. But they still exist if you're going to be paying in the future with your debit cards and credit cards. It's something you still have to deal with. Okay? So, if can I reword this in another way? What if I said this? One dollar... Is there a way to divide a dollar by 10? And what's it called when we divide a dollar by 10? Atiyah. A dime. It's a dime, right? So the dime would be 0 0.1, or if you like writing it this way, 0 0.10. This is why a lot of people are fans of two decimal places, because money is easier to visualize like if you go to a store to buy something and the price is a dollar fifty, you see it like this. You do not see it like this. You usually don't see it like this. Okay, it's one fifty. Okay? So basically our coins can represent decimals. Because that's essentially what they are. So if you had a dollar and I divided it say by twenty what would my answer be? If you guys can remember back in grade three, 20 what makes up a dollar? Tahir? A nickel. And a nickel is five cents. Zero decimal zero five. And another way to divide a dollar, you'd have to divide it by what? How else can you divide a dollar evenly? Using quarters. Using quarters. So how many quarters are in a dollar? Four. There's four. So divide it by four, you get zero decimal twenty-five, right? So that's what that question was asking. Okay. It's a, it's asking you why is this? Why would you need a hundred of these to make a dollar? And it wants you to think of pennies, and then, you know, that way you're making a real life connection, because money is something you deal with every single day. Maybe not you guys individually, but you are responsible for your parents and all the money they spend on you guys every day. I found that this question here had a lot of people, uh, it confused you. So let's try and clear the confusion right now because you'll see that the way that this question is structured in this uh, jump math book is really, it's really good, okay? So let's do the one that, let's do 2C and it said three, times two decimal seven, okay? Three times two decimal seven. So now, before you get in a panic, if I asked you to multiply three times 27, what would you do to multiply three times 27? Hussein. Well, first, I'd break the number down I break the number 27 down, so it's 20 and 7. Okay. Then I would times 3 times 20, which is 60. So hold on, slow down. 3 times 20, because the 3 doesn't get broken down, correct? Because yeah. it's already as low as it can possibly go. So the, why did you break up 20 and 7? Because it's a big number, and it would be hard to just multiply it just like that. So you're, so making, you're making the numbers manageable. Yeah. Perfect. Just I just want to understand what you're thinking. Okay. Then um, three times seven. 
equals 21. And then if you add it, then it equals 81. Okay, so now, now that you know that, okay, I, some of you have panicked because of the decimals. So now let's put in the decimal there. So in the guide or in the, in the homework, what, what it said was, it did this. From the 2.7, which digit represents ones? That's what it's asking. So from the 2.7, this is, this is the number here, the important one right now. What represents ones? Not the two. So this is the ones column right here. And because we've labeled this ones, the decimal seven, what does the seven represent in this situation? Isha. It represents tenths. So let's just label that. You're not expected to label it, but if it helps you, by all means, label it. No one's going to tell you, do not label it. So, it has ones, and then it says tenths. Okay. So, the first step is to multiply the ones. What am I multiplying? Tell me what I am multiplying in the ones. Virj. Right. Three times two, and that equals six, right? What are we multiplying in the tenths? Elias. The seven. So you're multiplying three. It's just saying three times seven. And what's three times seven? 21. It's 21. So now, the confusion, I believe, and it did a plus here. And I know the equals is beside it, but since I've run out of room, I'm going to move it down here. My question to you is, is it possible to have 21 tenths? Or what's another way of saying 21 tenths? What's another way of saying that? Assume I have 21 of these. I don't have 21 of these handy right now. But if I had 21 of these, how many do I have? Miriam, you have two holes, right? And then how many tenths are you left over with? You're left over with one. So you would do one tenth is left over because the two of them have now jumped over to the ones column. I already had six ones. Two joined the party. How many do I have right now? Sarah? I have eight. So now I have eight ones and one tenth. And, the, and it asks you to put the decimal. Eight decimal one. Which you should make a connection right here. This is the same answer. The only thing is, it has a decimal. And if you multiplied it, you know, the old-fashioned way, you go 2.7 multiplied by 3 because some of us still like to do this this multiplication right here is this is what you're doing in your head but for some of you this is this is happening so fast that it's very hard for you to break down the steps for the students who have difficulties breaking down the steps this should help you a little bit. Hussein's strategy of breaking the numbers up, you know, the same strategy we've been using to multiply, can be used effectively with decimals as well. Yes, Taha. And with the multiplication, yes. I did it. Say if there's three decimal numbers, we have to move a decimal three. Okay. Would you have to do that? Yep. So here, let's give an example because that's a great question. So let's make, we're going to just create a new question right now. It's not from any of the activities we've done, but you will definitely see this one day. So you, let's try, let's start with two decimals, okay? Let's do, um, let's do four point, I don't know, five multiplied by 
3.7, what a great number. 3.7. That's about the average goals the Leafs let up every period. Right? Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> if you were to multiply these, if you did it the old-fashioned way, you go 7 times 5 is what, 35? Carry the 3. 7 times 4 is 28, right? Plus 3, 31. So now, m the trick that I was taught, when you go down to the next column, the next row, you put a 0 here. Because you're in the 10s column now. So there's an automatically a 10 there. So you just put a 0. Because anything you multiply by 10 is going to end with a 0 if it's a whole number, right? So that's the idea behind this. So you go 3 times 5, because you can't multiply 3 and 7. They're the same number. They stick together. 3 times 5, oh, I heard 15. Get rid of that because it's going to confuse us. Put the 1 here now. 3 times 4 is plus 1 is 13. Okay. So now I do my simple adding. 5 and 0 is 5, 6, 6, and 1. So now, Taha, here's the trick. Assume the decimals here right now. There's two decimal spots used here. So you do a little jump here, and you put the number there. So your final answer is 16.65. But when you're doing double-digit multiplication, it gets a little tricky. Or even if you want, you can still use the whole array model thingy where this is 30, this is 400, Right, three times, what's three times four? 12? And we got three zeros, so we put the zeros at the end, 12,000. And then you would put the six here, 2,400. We've done this extensively, right? So you could still do this if you choose to. Let's do six multiplied by 4.25. I was going to do five. No, let's do seven, you're right. Okay, let me rewrite this. I want your answer. I want. Ugh, I can't even write today. Six multiplied four point two seven. Okay, so these are your questions here. So now we have ones, right? What what other place value column is being used here? Tenths. And then you have hundreds, right? Okay, so watch this. This number here is the number that we need. Which digit represents the ones? Virage. Four. So we go, and remember, the six stays. Six times stays for all of them. Six times, six times, six times. Six multiplied by, and in this case, it's four. What's six times four? Easy one, right? It's 24. And then what's next in the tenths column? Two. So six times two. That is 12. And six times, and the hundreds, what's in the hundreds? Mohammed. Seven. It's seven. Six times seven? How about 42 this time? Okay, so now we have a little problem. Which of these need to be rewritten? What needs to be rewritten? You will notice that you might have more than one answer this time. What needs to be rewritten? Tim? The tenths and the hundredths. You say the tenths and the hundredths? Yes. I'm going to include the ones too. How about that? Okay. Let's do the ones too. These all need to be rewritten. Because remember, you can only have one digit in each place value. So, let's start with the hundredths. 42 hundredths. 42 hundredths is 42 of these guys here. Okay? Something magical happens when you get 10 of these, right? Do you guys remember what magic happens when you get 10 of these? 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I got 10 of these right here. What magic happens with 10 of these? What happens? Miriam? It becomes a 10th. So, see here, just to show you the magic, they attach, it's like in space when gravity coalesces everything and everything starts spinning, right? 
These tents are like that too. They have their own magical, mathematical gravity. I'm pretty sure they do. I can almost guarantee it. So you have these, which is equivalent to that. So we have 42 of these. So 42 hundredths is like saying what? What is it? What else can we say? Okay, so we have four tenths, two hundredths. Bear with me on this one, please. So now we have 12 tenths. What can we break up 12 tenths into? So now we've got 12 of these guys here, 12 of them. What can we turn this into? Ija. One, one. One, one, because when you have 10 of these, it turns into one of these. It's magic mathematical gravity don't you forget it okay you have one one and two tenths and let's go into the ones column now 24 ones is like saying what so this is going back to September now. 24 is what on place value two tens. so you got two tens four ones now let's have a look here what matches uh, on our little diagram here what's matching here first of all is there one that's solo like it has no partner at all who's got no one to mingle with Maher sorry so two hundredths in decimal what does two hundredths look like yeah so I'm gonna say zero point zero two there's the hundreds it's all by itself what else is all by itself let's get rid of the ones who are isolated right now Tim the two, ten. two tens two tens is like saying what number 20. 20 simple right they're gone everything else appears to have a partner what has what's the next one that matches to you guys I don't care which one you pick. It doesn't matter. Virage. The tenths, right? So I have tenths here. You said two tenths. Is there somewhere else I have tenths? tenths? Saying tenths too much is tenths. tricky. Where's the tenths? How many tenths is actually? What are, where else is there tenths? How many? Ten. How many tenths are there? Le like I've, I've got the two here. Six. Sorry? There's six, but where's, remember, you got four here, right? So, two tenths and four tenths combined gives you how many tenths? It's higher. And now what does that look like in decimals? 0 0.6. 0 point, I'm going to do 0 0.60, okay? And now I have ones left over, right? How many ones do I have left over? What's left in ones, Miriam? There it is. And how many ones does that give us? Five. So now, you take all these numbers, and what do you do with them? You stare at them. They'll just look back at you. Minahel? Add them up. So now, if I want to keep this consistent, I want to keep the decimal. I'm going to, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to multi add these two, 20 and 5, right? So these two get added. 20 plus 5. five. Keeping it simple. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little line here to separate the decimals. So now I have 60 and 0, 2, right? So if I had to add these together, if I had 60. And 2, what is 60 plus 2? Right, it's 62 or 0 0.62 in this case. So you add these, you get 0 0.62. So you have 25. 25 plus 0 is 25. Decimal, you have 62. So your final answer will look like this. 25 decimal 62.